Hey guys, today I wanted to share a story with you guys about MTG Finance. When I had another channel, the New Law Student channel, it was just MTG Finance. Now occasionally I had some anime music videos, but the majority of the videos were related to MTG Finance. Now MTG Finance is fun. I find it very fun. I don't make a living from it. I don't make any noticeable income. But I find it fun to do it. But the community itself is extremely toxic. I'm just going to kind of read some of the stuff. So on Reddit, uh, James, I have interacted with James before. And I've interacted with other MTG finance people. Uh, to the point that he was going to out my real name. Uh, essentially, he was going to dox me. And I do have those original emails from James over just speculation. So, yeah, I mean, you guys know my name. One of the most searched things for MTG Line is what is MTG Line's real name? So, but that was a different time back then. Uh, essentially, he is saying that his sources told him Back to Basics would be reprinted and props are a great source for solid intel. So it is insider trading. That is the definition of what is happening. It's people using information that is not publicly available at the time to make decisions. And that is what it is. Uh, a lot of MTG finance people are some of the most toxic people I know. They care about the pennies and the nickels. They're the type of people to nickel and dime you to death. And it makes it so it's not fun to play magic anymore. And I will be uh, very blunt in and say I used to be one of those people. Um, I used to be one of those people who needed to get the edge in every single trade. What changed was I just enjoyed the game. I no longer thought about making money from the game or living off the game, which I, I did a little bit in grad school, but then it became pretty clear to me that you can make a lot more money doing anything else besides being pro magic player. So that's a poor excuse for sharing the information, sharing that information and trying to explain it away. Omi furthers the issue. Is it your position that if I have information, I should keep it to myself? If you have this kind of information and moved on it with publicly traded stocks, you would be going to jail. Hashtag ethics except I didn't move on it at all. I made it public so that a small group of people wouldn't benefit alone. So it's kind of like, even if he didn't sell it, so I don't know, it's impossible to prove, did he sell it, did he not sell it? But assuming he received inside information, Back to Basic was spoiled by Channel Fireball, and clearly they got the card early because they needed to make a video about it. The same with the Mana Source Wedge or Tolarian. They get their cards very early on and they can make financial decisions based on that. Ethically bankrupt argument. I see inside information all the time in my sector. I can't go around telling my buddies this is just as guilty as insider trading. In MTG, it isn't... a legal but it sure isn't ethical let me make this simple which is more ethical once i have been told information i did not request share it or keep it to myself knowing that it is already out there so we are in a circular logical loop where you know hey you received information should i share it for the quote public good but really it's for individual benefit it is so you can write a tweet saying i told you so Right. So if this didn't benefit James at all, he wouldn't tweet about it. He wants to be an expert. He wants to be, for lack of a better word, a Ty Lopez type of guy, right? Where he's showing off the Lamborghinis and his quote library books that he reads every month. Uh, MTG staples. This is a bad look because we know the origin of the source is whoever had beat back to basics as a preview card. So they're in trouble, right? That's not the source. Four more people are aware of these details than you realize. How could you possibly know the original source? You stated that you aren't aware who the original source is. So if James got it from a person that wasn't the person who got the card spoiled, wouldn't the person who had the card to spoil, 
wouldn't he be able to tell other people and they would tell other people and they would tell other people? I mean, leaks are a big problem, especially if they're reprints. Like, leaks on new cards, harder to figure out if it's a good card or not. Uh, one of the most famous leaks that I remember was the uh, Vampire Hex Maids leak. So if you don't know, Vampire Hex Maids had a combo with uh, the land, the legendary snow land. And it was super obvious from anyone who saw Vampire Hex Maids from a god book at the time. They had these books that they used to give to uh, essentially anybody who wanted them who was writing a quote article back in the days when we had physical magazines, of course. And they, these article article companies would then give it to pros like Guillaume. Guillaume Bo, I think both Guillaume's got caught. Uh, they are French Magic Pro players. They got caught with, I think, the new Phyrexia God Book and a few other God Books. And actually, the most casual players didn't even know these things existed. But now it kind of makes sense. These magazines would need these books uh, detailing every single new card a month in advance so they can publish these articles. Because it's print. Shouldn't your source not be saying anything to MTG Finance that's insider trading? No. As with most of MTG Finance, locating and making leaks public allows more players to get ahead and chipping away the natural advantages of the insiders and big vendors. If I stay quiet, those in the know get a bit further ahead. It also allows people like yourself to sell out cards early before others do because you have insider information and we have no proof that you didn't. Otherwise, otherwise, other than your word. My word is well regarded by those that would know. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but does that mean your source broke confidentiality to give you this info ahead of time? So we're going into a circular argument when the actual, like, it's the, I don't see this happening in any other field or any other, like, thing I've ever been involved in except magic, where the answer is, is this in the question is is this insider trading yes or no yes no is it ethical to do what you did yes no and we're in this circular loop where suddenly we're talking about who gave who information but that that's not the original question the original question can be answered with two yeses or two no's or a combination so now we're talking about who the source is my information was second or third hand. I mean, this is so ridiculous. The question is, is this insider trading? The answer is yes. Second question, is it ethical? The answer is no. And there you go. It doesn't matter where the source comes from. It doesn't matter if you bought cards, sold cards, set cards on fire like seances. MTG Finance is really into that. Um, or it doesn't matter any of these facts. It's did you receive inside information somehow from somewhere? It doesn't really matter ahead of. Now, obviously, some stores like Cool Stuff Inc. were still selling back to basics for $120. Right? I mean, it looks bad now that I have a screenshot of it in a previous video, but that's what it was worth at the time $120 for a back to basics. And clearly, some people knew, and some people didn't. So if the buy list for Back to Basics was $60, and a lot of MTG Finance people complain about this, is when they, uh, a card is being reprinted, they send in the card right before it drops in price, and then they want to hold the price over the vendor's head because the vendor said, okay, I'll honor that price. Well, Back to Basics is not going to be a $60 buy list card anymore. If you can get $60 retail for Back to Basics, you've got to sell to all of them right now. So, very strange, uh, very, uh, and this explains why I really want to segment myself. So, MTG Finance, I kind of do for fun. I kind of want a new word for it because I do not want to be associated with this community at all. And I'm sure they don't want to be associated with me because that's fine. Uh, that is absolutely fine. But this is the shady and unethical behavior that they continue to display over and over again. Uh, from the sharking, and I'm so glad I am not one of them anymore. Or you know, I've, I'm so glad I am removed from this whole very stressful thing. Because if your life is taking advantage of people, and there's a story. I don't know if this story is true or not. It is on Reddit. 
The guy's getting roasted already, and he knows he would. And to get his five minutes of fame, like, he's going to get roasted, I will pass. So this is Reddit. If you're going to inside trade, you probably shouldn't talk about it, even though it's not illegal in this case. The Wire is a really good movie. This book says, show to the IRS. What does the other say? Do not show to the IRS. So, <laughs> I mean... Sometimes Reddit is kind of funny. I'm not a big fan of it, obviously, because they roast me for no reason. Well, I mean, sometimes it, it makes sense why they're roasting me. But I interacted with him a while ago, and my interaction was very similar to a lot of people posting on Reddit, uh, their interactions. It's just draining all the fun of life, like fret after fret after fret. Oh, I'm going to dox you. I'm going to, and you know, he can argue it, but I have it. And he actually made a document with my real name and all of that, like all my confident, like all my private information at the time. And he shared it with a lot of MTG finance people because uh, I've seen the document myself and with his arguments against me. And I don't even know what we were originally fighting about, probably like speculation on some card. And yeah, I don't like MTG finance. Well, I do like MTG finance, but I really despise the community uh, with all my heart. I truly like, there's very few things in life I dislike as much as MTG finance community. And that's very strange coming from me, right? But this is why uh, it's so, there's no talking sense into them. Once they kind of decide, hey, I am not, I am ethical. This is not inside trading. You can explain it to them. You can do it, but then it's then they kind of derail it, and now you're talking about where your source came. Is it a source primary, secondary? Does that really matter in this behavior? Like, does it matter who did what before you did something? It's your action that is being put on trial, not what someone. So if someone did something bad, and then you did something bad because you saw that person doing someone bad, you're still guilty. Like if the person in front of you speeding and you want to quote, follow traffic and you start speeding too, you're as guilty as the first one. Maybe the first person doesn't get caught. Maybe they do, but you're still speeding. I saw James Chilcott. So that's a very interesting uh, story. So I definitely, I completely missed it, but it kind of re resembles like there's some people in this community that just make it not fun. Um, they're just not fun in person to play with. They're not fun in uh, to be around. They just zap. You know, if they're trying to nickel dot, if you're trading cards, now I'm very more lax. I don't care about a dollar or two a card. If you need something, yeah, go ahead and take it. Uh, but the worst type of trader is someone who's nickel and diming you on everything and they need to, what do you value this at? And you're just trying to catch you slipping, right? They're trying to catch you, say the wrong numbers so they can take advantage of you. We all know who those people are at local game stores. I do not interact with them. They try to talk to me. I do not talk back. I just ignore them because in my opinion, if you go play magic, you should be going there to have a good time. You should be having fun. If it's not fun, then why are you there on a Friday night? There's so many other things you can be doing or your friends or your families or you making new friends. This guy is the guy who wrote really useless articles on MTG Finance and then locked them away behind a paywall, causing me never to use that site again. That might be the least obnoxious thing about him, but this does absolutely reek of him as trying to establish credibility by creating the appearance of having a source at China Fireball. He doesn't. Yep, he posted a Facebook screenshot where he said B2B would be reprinted. He only posted this after it had been considering. LMAO, this tweet is great evidence as to why these dudes are trading children's board game pieces instead of securities. It's the one thing that always sticks out to me as odd. They're trading in Play-Doh when there's literal, literal real gold out there. If there had any good at the real finance trading side of things, you would be using real money instead of specking on a $2 rare. So yeah, I mean, this is MTG finance in a nutshell. I can't summarize the MTG finance community better than this. And of course, 
people will criticize me because they still think I'm MTG Finance, but really I'm doing this as a fun hobby. I'm, I don't, it is not worth, as I get older and as I enjoy magic more, I realize it's not worth my time to to nickel and dime, to inside trader, to build up my reputation on things. Uh, it's not worth it because at the end of the day, what did you really gain? You gain reputation in a children's card game. So now you are more credible in a children's card game. Wouldn't you want to be credible in like actual finance? Wouldn't you want to be in ink or for wouldn't you want to be doing anything more than <laughs> inside trading unethical inside trading on a children's card game and that's what you're proud of i mean come on you gotta be kidding me right mtg finance at its finest moment